France's president suffers a major setback. Emmanuel Macron's party loses control of the National Assembly, and the far left and far right make historic gains in the legislative election. So how will he govern over the next five years? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Adrian Finnegan. France's president is facing five years of political turmoil following unprecedented results from the legislative election. Emmanuel Macron's centrist coalition has lost its majority in the National Assembly. It's the first time that's happened to a president's party in 20 years. The biggest winners were the far right and the far left. Less than half of eligible voters cast a ballot in the second round on Sunday. The National Assembly Speaker lost his seat, along with the Ministers for Health and the Environment. So where did the seats go? Well, the National Assembly Chamber has 577 members. Emmanuel Macron needed 289 seats to keep a majority. And although the President's centrist ensemble coalition remains the biggest party, it secured only 245 seats. A left-wing alliance, the new ecological and social popular union, dubbed NUP, United behind the left leader Jean-Luc Mélenchon. It's said to be the main opposition group with 131 seats. And the biggest surprise, the far-right leader Marine Le Pen's National Rally Party scored 89 seats, up from just eight five years ago. The traditional right, the Republicans, saw their vote collapse to 61 seats. The remaining 51 are held by other parties. Well, leaders of the far left and far right say they're determined to complicate Macron's legislative agenda. It's a totally unexpected situation, absolutely unheard of. The collapse of the presidential party is total and no majority is presented. We have achieved the political objectives that we had set ourselves in less than a month to bring down the one who, with such arrogance, had twisted the arm of the whole country, who had been elected without knowing what for. I think that everyone considers that this is a victory for the Rassemblement National. We're entering the Assembly with a very powerful group of MPs. We're the first opposition party ahead of La France Insoumise, and consequently we're going to be able to work as an opposition group. As I had requested from the French people, we will operate with full power, with all the means that are granted by the Constitution to an opposition group which is the first one in the Assembly. We'll begin our discussion in just a moment, but first, Jonah Hull reports from Paris. A dreadful election, this, for Emmanuel Macron and his centrists in Parliament who've lost a hundred of their seats and their absolute majority. They will now have to find new alliances in Parliament, either on a case-by-case -case basis or some sort of formal hookup if they're to pass any legislation at all. And the likelihood is they'll start talking immediately to the traditional right, the Republicans, with whom they've worked before. They have 61 seats. Macron needs 44 seats to hit the majority line. No guarantee that that will be successful and so there is at least the prospect of deadlocked government over the next five years with an economic crisis worsening here in France. That's not the only problem they face. The centrists increasingly hemmed in now in Parliament between rising forces on the left and the far left and the far right with Marine Le Pen's success, the success of her national rally party. And there's an additional question over participation. A majority of French voters didn't take part in this election. Three quarters of young voters between 18 and 24 didn't take part in this election. They simply don't have faith and trust in their politicians to solve their problems. And so the possibility is that rather like the Gilets jaunes protests during Macron's first term, that during his second again, people may choose to take their problems to the streets. I'm Jonah Hull for Inside Story. So let's bring in our guests from Paris. We're joined by political analyst Hamid Kriet. Uh, in London is uh, Philippe Malière, who is uh, Professor of French and European Politics at University College London. And from Santander, Fabrice Poitier, CEO of Rasmussen Global, a political consultancy. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Story. Let's start with you then, uh, Hamid. Um, what do you make of these election results? Um, was this election, uh, as some French newspapers have said, a political earthquake? To what extent does the makeup now of the National Assembly make France 
ungovernable for the next five years. Well, as you said, it's un ungovernable for the French president, the current French Emmanuel Macron. I believe it's a huge victory for the leftist and the uh, other party, which is the far right, Marine Le Pen. Uh, they have lost more than uh, 100 seats in the French parliament. So I believe it's a victory for the leftists. We've seen that the majority couldn't, uh, you know, uh, go on the ground to, in order to persuade, to argument for the uh, French election, the importance of this uh, parliamentary election. And we've seen it's a huge defeat for the French president. There is also, you know, a, a lot of doubt about the democracy. Uh, do not forget that we had the Yellow Vest movement. Uh, uh, which uh, uh, were very, you know, uh, they had the anger against this uh, French president, which is very unpopular. So I believe now uh, the abstentionist, which is the important point that uh, a lot of people, you know, forget about it. Uh, the, the abstention is more than 52 percent uh, that uh, people, you know, did not vote. Uh, uh, we've seen uh, we are in the same scenario that in uh, 1980. Uh, with the, uh, the former president, François Mitterrand, that when he had to uh, consolidate his uh, majority in the parliament, so he had to compose with the Communist Party and the centrists. So we have in the same, you know, scenario, and this is, will, of course, change the political map in the French parliament. So I believe now there is a huge doubt about the democracy, but also French people are fed up. They do not believe in the democracy. And uh, I, I think the most challenge is to convince them that democracy is very important for our institution. OK. Philippe Mallier uh, in London. Professor, um, to what extent, then, will the next five years be about tortuous negotiation, political compromise for both the president and his party, will they be able to find some consensus uh, and some parliamentary stability? Yes, indeed. Hello, uh, first of all. Yes, uh, Macron's party and Macron himself will have to learn to compromise, something he hasn't done much uh, to date, uh, because falling short of 43, 44 seats in Parliament is a lot, and he will need absolutely to get those votes in Parliament whenever uh, his party uh, and government wants to, to pass legislation, notably legislat legislation which might prove controversial with other uh, parliamentary groups, notably uh, with the left. And there's only one way for Macron now, uh, given that he's got a solid block to his left with NUPS, uh, which has really largely increased uh, his total uh, share of the votes and seats, is to turn to the right and to turn to the Republicans, uh, the, the party of former President Sarkozy. And this party, of course, could really coalesce and work alongside um, Macron's party on a number of issues, notably economic policies. However, it's an opposition party. And I think the president of the party uh, said it yesterday on French TV, we are an opposition party. So in fact, the stakes are very high because you will have to compromise, but also to give, to make some concessions with, with the right. And it remains to be seen whether the right will want to enter in a coalition even if it's a, a kind of ad hoc type of coalition, not a formal one, uh, because, of course, being an opposition party, the Republicans will think about what comes next. In five years' time, Macron will have to retire as president. He can't run again. So, of course, this party will sort of think twice whether to commit itself to a party and a president which are increasingly unpopular. Fabrice Wartier in, in Santander, then, what concessions will... Uh... Emmanuel Macron have to make to ensure the support of, of the Republicans in the Assembly? And, and will that mean that, that his government has to shift to the right? Well, I think on the last part of your question, that's not necessarily a fundamental problem for Emmanuel Macron, who has been governing mostly on the right over the past uh, five years. Uh, I think the main uh, uh, kind of compromise he can make towards the uh, Republicans is in appointing potentially a new prime minister who's got uh, either who's coming from that family or who has enough credibility with the conservative right to be able to reach out and work with them. But I think more globally, uh, what these um, election results tell us is basically this has been brewing for, for a while now, where you have to imagine that um, a lot of French people, French voters, felt that they had already voted twice 
in the second round of la, la, the last two presidential elections for Emmanuel Macron by default, because basically it was either Macron or a, an extremist uh, like Marine Le Pen. And, and there was this frustration that I think uh, many French voters felt they could finally overcome in the uh, legislative elections yesterday by being able to vote for uh, their preferred candidate or their preferred party. And I think this is important that, that I think Emmanuel Macron and his party understand that this is not something new, this is not a kind of freak accident, but actually it reflects something that has been growing in French politics for the past five years or more. Just to finish, uh, this is the, 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 the result of uh, the main uh, mainstream party is mostly the Socialist Party and the Republican shrinking, or in the case of the Socialists, quasi disappearing. And Emmanuel Macron kind of sitting the uh, 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 homage movement into as the center ground main party. And, and in front of that, you have now two very strong uh, extremes. And this is obviously a, a, a rather unhealthy landscape uh, for democracy where you have to choose between a center or uh, two extremes. And I think in the next five years will tell us if he and his partners in government will manage to rebuild something that is more than just a single center ground party, but some political proposition that is more attractive to French voters so they don't have necessarily to go and vote for either the extreme left or the extreme right. Okay, I want to, want to pick up on what you're saying there and, and put the same question to, to all three of you here. If you can give me you know, reasonably brief answers. Um, I want to know whether you think or to what extent President Macron is the, is the architect here of, of his own problems. Uh, we'll put that one to, to um, Hamid first. Well, of course, he's the architect. He entered it uh, because of him, uh, the, uh, you know, the far right entered it in the French parliament for the first time. He was his, the candidate who passed the uh, global bills. He passed the, uh, the law, or the Islamophobic law, which is the separatism. He was the candidate that wants to uh, uh, increase the, you know, the age of retirement to 60 to 65. So they all, all these old measures are very unpopular. And that's why we have these consequences of, you know, of a clearly a, a condemnation of his all reforms. Okay, Philippe. Uh, yes, I broadly agree with what your your guest just said here. I, I think clearly uh, Macron came, and I think that's probably something really to bear in mind. When he was elected uh, five years ago for the first time, he was before a minister in a socialist-led government. So he came really to the presidency with a kind of aura or, or profile, if you like, of a young modernizer, but which, which could somehow reconcile, you know, bits of the left and bits of the right. And that's exactly how he so-called sold his political project. I'm neither left-wing or nor right-wing. I'm, in a way, both of, both of them. Let's take the best of, of, of both worlds, in a way. And it seems that now, five years down the line, he's lost his uh, so-called left wing, you know, i.e. people who also uh, came uh, with him uh, from the Socialist Party, you know, former MPs or simply voters who used to vote for the centre-left party, the Socialist Party, until 2017, who were quite appealed by his political project or modern modernization. But now it's very clear that on economic issues, but also on law and order, on cultural, societal issues, he can't be labeled center, center left. That, that's over. No one believes in that now. He's clearly a man on the right. Some put it very much to the right. Others think is a kind of center right. It depends on your how you you on on your take on that. But anyway, no one takes him as a sort of center left leader. So that's why clearly he's now in a kind of trouble and can only turn to the right to, to carry on and to try to, to, to seek a majority. And, and Fabrice, I mean, to what extent is, is this Macron's, Macron's own, own fault? I think to, to go into the question of whether it's his fault is, is, is not necessarily the right way to put it. I would say that he has taken advantage of what he saw, maybe before uh, many other actors, <laughs> Uh, the, the, the fall of the traditional parties, especially the Socialist Party. And that's why he was elected uh, mostly as a, on the center-left ticket or as a center-left leader, even though he governed on the, on, on the right. And, and he saw that maybe before others, and he took advantage and he got elected to everybody's surprise. So, but I think he was more an actor than a creator of the collapse of these uh, center-left, uh, center-right parties in France. However, 
uh, his responsibility is that uh, the previous speaker is right, that he has been using a lot of the uh, conservative to, to hard right agenda on, on national identity, on law and order, which in a way has normalized the agenda carried by the Rassemblement National. And now they have basically multiplied by 10 the numbers of MPs sitting in the Assemblée Nationale. OK, Hamid, um, what does this election um, mean for uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon and his bloc, which is which is now the the biggest opposition force in France. Well, for of course, it's a tremendous victory for John Luc Mélenchon, the leftist, because he you know he uh, realized a, a very huge coalition with the you know the popular the suburb area and the uh, leftist and the ecologist and others political party. So I believe now it's, of course, a tremendous victory for John Luc Mélenchon. And of course, John Luc Mélenchon will play a major role in the uh, this new coalition, which is called NIPS. But I believe what is the most important thing is now the Republican front uh, has been exposed because of Emmanuel Macron. Uh, he uh, did not give any instruction in order to vote for the leftist against, uh, uh, against the far right. And uh, do not forget that when we had the presidential election, uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron were beginning uh, uh, the leftists in order to, to gain this presidential election. And if today he is a president, it's because of the leftist voters that helped him to win this election. And this is, I believe, it's a very important point. Now we don't have this Republican front, and it's a very dangerous steps for this president who normalized the far-right party in the French parliament, which is, I believe, it will be very dangerous for the stability of the French society and uh, the political map in the French parliament. Uh, what, Philippe, what, what do you make of, of, of the success of the, the, the national rally of, of Marine Le Pen in uh, this election? Eight to 89 seats. I mean, what does that tell us? Well, if you, if you compare with uh, the... the... The other guest just said that it was a tremendous success for the United Left, NUPSA. I would beg to differ a bit. I would, I would say they've made uh, considerable gains, but it's not a uh, sort of tremendous success, I think. You could argue now, although she got far less seats than you, the United Left, uh, let's bear in mind that United Left is at least four, if not five parties together. So that's uh, uh, put to put things in perspective. So in, in the end, it's not maybe not such massive gains. Whereas for her, you know, she used to have eight MPs, including yourself, in the previous uh, parliament. Now she's got 89. And that's really an achievement. And that's, of course, very worrying for all those in French society and elsewhere think that, of course, the far right uh, may not, in power may not be a good idea for France, for Europe and the world in general. Uh, yes, and that what, what it shows is, it, is that the uh, far right, the national rally, keeps making gains. For a very long time, one used to say in French politics, French political commentators used to say, there's a glass ceiling for the far right. You know, they will be doing quite well in the presidential election because it's a nominal election, personal. The Le Pen's father and daughter are well known to the public, so they will get good scores. However, they will never get elected. Well, look, last time round, she came even closer to power and Macron, the margin between Macron and herself wasn't that big anymore. The same applies now with the other uh, election, the legislative election, where the party until now couldn't make significant gains in the two ballot majoritarian system. Now they're able to do so. They're able to win 89, so 89 constituencies, and not simply in the traditional bastions of the Southeast and the North and Northeast, but now in the Pyrenees region, in Aquitaine, in Dordogne, in central France, they get MPs elected. So that shows that there's a nationalization of the far right vote. It's a party which may not be seen anymore by some French voters as uh, a threat to democracy, as an extreme party. And that's why I think everyone opposing the, the, the far right and the national rally in France have a, have a lot to worry about. Uh, Fabrice, given that, that that glass ceiling that Philippe was talking about appears to have been shattered here, uh, can Marine Le Pen's party uh, any longer be described as, as, as an extreme, as the Overton window shifted here? Is it, is it now mainstream? Well, I think that it's still extreme in their views and the agenda that they carry, but clearly now they are uh, building roots into the uh, political, the French political system. And this is, of course, to uh, worry, uh, especially in what will come after 
Macron's mandate in, in five years' time. Uh, just, just to add uh, to, to the previous point, uh, I think indeed the uh, left-wing coalition led by Mélenchon looks like the, the biggest winner on the outside. But on the inside, this is a very uh, uh, fragmented group. And, and my prediction is that they are going to have quite a lot of challenge to stay together. Uh, they, each party that makes the, that group will try to obviously form their different groups inside the uh, French uh, National Assembly. And I think there are already some, some tensions between the communist leader and Mélenchon. And I think you can bet on Macron trying to steer the French environmentalists uh, away from that coalition closer to the center left. So I think this is probably going to be, uh, they are going to fight uh, more with each other or as much with each other as with Macron. The real danger, and I agree with the previous speaker, is really coming from uh, Marine Le Pen and the Rassemblement National, which is a more coherent force, and we will clearly prepare itself for uh, the next presidential election in five years' time. And, and Philippe, I'm just going to come back to you. I'll be, I'll be with you again in a moment, Hamid, but, but Philippe, with several high profiles in the president's uh, party voted out in this election. The president himself, as you said, unable to run again at the end of this uh, this this term. What is the future for for En Marche or Renaissance? I mean, does it have a future without Macron? Well, it's a it's a very important question. It's very hard to tell right now what will be the future of En Marche, and particularly uh, the one certainty, as you just. Uh, pointed out is that Macron will not run again, so will probably retire from active politics in less than five years, years' time. You might argue enough time for a new young leader to emerge and replace it. Well, there they are, you know, like the former Prime Minister Edouard Philippe, which, who, by the way, doesn't belong to En Marche. It's another small party called Horizon. Uh, he might be, he might step in, so and other people might step in. But I think it's, for the time being, Macron has a problem with uh, La République En Marche. It's a bit of an empty shell, and it, that election showed again that there, there are no real activists uh, on the ground. Uh, there, there are no local barons. This is what you need for a party to be successful and, and durable, you know, and, and be exist, have a long life. And it doesn't have that. And clearly, if you add to it the fact that the three ministers lost the election, and Macron won before the election, any minister losing. Uh, the, 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 the battle in their constituency will have to resign and, and leave the government. So that, and the, the the speaker of the house also lost his seat. So he will have to to, to go. So this is really a party where you don't even have in this uh, current uh, uh, legislature, you know, heavyweights. Uh, so all the, the the few heavyweights he had, he lost them yesterday. So that's a it's a very difficult situation. And yes, uh, for the time being, the, the future of uh, La République en Marche uh, looks quite uncertain. And Hamid, we've, we've spent the last 20 minutes or so talking about an extraordinary election, but we have to remember, uh, ultimately, but this was on a, on a voter turnout of, of 46%. How or what does that tell us about how French voters feel about French politics? Why did, did more than half of the country's electorate stay away? Well, very good question you asked me, because I think it's very important today. There is a lot of, you know, crisis in France. Uh, do not forget that we have the Yellow Vest movement and the uh, Russian invasion. Uh, uh, as a result, we have the uh, inflation and people uh, do not uh, see, uh, you know, a change for themselves. So they see that they live in uh, the same poverty. They've seen the inequality and they've seen that there's not, you know, the uh, raise of the uh, salary, the minimum uh, wage of salary. That's why Jean-Luc Mélenchon wants to increase the minimum salary to 60, uh, to 100, 300, to 100, five, 1,000, sorry, 500 uh, euro. So I believe people now are fed up. They do not believe in the democracy. Uh, they believe in, uh, you know, protesting in the street, uh, uh, asking uh, for uh, social reform in order to fight the inequality and the poverty. That's why today, the old French parliament, in the reality, did not represent the entire French people. And this is, is I think, is a very dangerous step for the stability of the regime. The uh, fifth okay. regime, uh, fifth republic, is uh, losing now his uh, architecture in the, uh, our institution. OK. Sorry to cut you short, Hamid. We are, we're out of time. Um, many thanks indeed for being with us, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Hamid Kriet, uh, Professor Philip Marlier, and uh, Fabrice Poitier.
Uh, and thank you, too, for watching. Don't forget you can see the programme again at any time by going to the website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the whole team here in Doha. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again. Bye for now. <laughs>